Coming up on today's wrestling news, John Laurinaitis claims he is a victim in the Vince McMahon sex trafficking lawsuit. Shawn Michaels refutes sexual assault allegations. Tori Wilson on literally fighting back tears during raunchy WWE segments. And Becky Lynch was told, quote, move like a girl during her WWE NXT years. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm Michael Hamflet. And this is the news, obviously, a content warning. There's going to be extensive uh, chat regarding the sex trafficking lawsuit throughout this news. So viewer discretion is advised. We should start with this John Laurinaitis mm. response, though, because despite the fact he's a co-defendant in that lawsuit, um, his attorney has claimed yesterday that his client is a victim of the former chairman, similar to the plaintiff, Janelle Grant, of course, who brought the suit. In a comment to Vice News, Laurinaitis' attorney, Edward Brennan, said, Mr. Laurinaitis deni denies the allegations in the misguided complaint and will be vigorously defending these charges in court, not the media. Like the plaintiff, Mr. Laurinaitis is a victim in this case, not a predator. The truth will come out. Uh, in a response to a follow-up question, basically seeking to clarify that he was indeed saying that McMahon was the predator and that Laurinaitis, like Grant, was a victim, Brennan wrote, read the allegations, read the federal statute, power control, employment supervisory capacity, uh, dictatorial sexual demands with repercussions if not met. Count how many times in the complaint Vince exerts control over both of them. I mean, yeah. Uh, we kind of referenced this last week when we you know, first reported the story. We're not experts on this, and there are obviously people that you can go to um, for sort of deeper dives into this yeah. and the legalities of all of this. It's going to be a lot of reading in this news yes. because people are speaking on very serious legal matters. It's a strategy. A legal mm -hmm. strategy from John Laurie's attorney here. It's a sort of, um, I mean, you know, read the quote and read the quote again, and, and you'll see it's both a denial and then at the same time, and at least, and not if not an admittance, an acknowledgement mm -hmm. of some of the things within it. Um, you know, as we said last week, the entire details of the suit are available to read online if you want, and that does come with its own kind of discretion warning. If you're, if you're able to read it, it's worth reading to help sort of form your own conclusions yes, yeah. as, as this trial goes on and will continue to kind of dictate so much of the conversation in wrestling. Um, so yeah, it's it's a statement when maybe one wasn't expected. Of course, mm -hmm. John Laurinaitis was uh, implicated when Vincent Mann first resigned in disgrace and then there was kind of radio silence yes. there. So this is different this time around. Obviously, there is a suit to respond to that directly names him. And I guess we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, exactly. It feels like this is uh, something that's going to roll on and on and, and possibly draw more, more, more and more people into it. So we're not going to speculate on it no. too much. Um, I suppose just to reiterate, you know, if you want to donate to a brilliant charity like Rain yeah. that we've supported, obviously uh, we we mentioned it last week. There was a link. There should be a link uh, to to donate to them, and all the money that we raised on our Royal Rumble stream in donations went to that charity as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a really awful state of affairs, and uh, support these amazing charities that do fantastic work when you can and believe survivors I just I reiterate that point every time we mention this yeah we'll put see if we can again put the links to the various yeah. services that we saw sort of mentioned last week because again it's not necessarily our world it might not be yours but you might want to reach out to these services and you can do so um, and sort of on that I guess linked to that is um, some comments made by Shawn Michaels during mm. uh, a press conference promoting uh, NXT Vengeance Day this weekend he did a media call which is something they typically do but it's typically uh, it's not the press conference set up it's normally like just no. like a dial in thing where members of the wrestling media can ask the questions it's typically a promotional vehicle but this time obviously as was the case with uh, Triple H at the Royal Rumble there were people with a lot of questions mm -hmm. uh, regarding the lawsuit most notably Nick Hausman from House of Wrestling Wrestling, who kind of directly addressed um, allegations, historic ones made by Ed Leslie, uh, better known as Brutus the Barber Beefcake, in shoot interviews that have uh, that are sort of like popular every now and then cl clips or resurface, yes. some old, some more recent, but the clips are out there non uh, nonetheless about Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty during their rockers days, when of course they worked with uh, Brutus Beefcake, um, taking advantage of women. Um, using Halcyon, um, I think the colloquialism was H-bombing yes. and the like, and it brings me goes into details, you can find those videos everywhere online, and Hausman referenced them directly in his question at Shawn Michaels, um, as all of this was in the air, I guess. Um, Shawn Michaels had a lengthy response, which is why I'm gonna read, so I apologize for going into quite a lot of detail. Michael says, quote, look, 
I will say this uh, as I've you know never shied away from the stupid stuff I did in the past. If you go back and ask Brutus Beefcake, he'll tell you, one, he's never seen any of that actually happen. He's also retracted it after saying it. I can say this, I've had a lot of struggles in my life and I don't know how to say this without sounding, I don't know, shameful, but being with a lady was not something Shawn Michaels had a difficult time doing. I've never been in a situation where that was not consensual or in any way, shape or form. I've never taken advantage of someone in that respect. But those things are done for two reasons and he kind of cuts himself off here and I've had a lot of counseling in my lifetime and the reason you do that stuff is because you dislike women or have power issues. Shawn Michaels did not have those. He had insecurity issues, he had problems feeling like he wasn't enough. That's why you do drugs and downers. The other stuff is built on power and disrespect for women, which is something I've never had. So any accusations against me as far as non-consensual time with a woman are simply not true. And um, there was another question within the press conference uh, about the safety of talent within the performance center. Obviously Triple H was moved to try and discuss safeguarding mm -hmm. practices and the like. Shawn Michaels offered the same. Um, he, so he added uh, alongside those statements, obviously everyone is aware of the situation and understands it. Like I said, it's an incredibly sad situation. I take all of the youth that come through here incredibly serious because it's a tough line of work regardless of what's going on. Leaving home and coming here and pursuing your dreams is a big thing we take incredibly seriously here. We understand young men and women that come through our doors are impressionable, so we absolutely, certainly encourage the openness and again, telling everybody to please tell us the truth and let us know how we can help. That's something that, again, has been here for a long time and we continue to do our best to improve on that because it's one of the most important things to me is to be able to ask those questions that you're afraid to ask. So we certainly empower them to do that and I give them the opportunity to do that. Right now, I think the talent in WWE and in NXT as a whole are extremely excited about the future and I know we are as well. He mentions other things such as changes made in 2022. He talks about his lack of knowledge of the corporate side, but mm -hmm. he's, he is aware of changes that were made to, to policies and procedures and you know, it kind of alludes to ongoing changes here. So, you know, nothing if not a very detailed response yeah. about the general state of things and specifically accusations made against him. That's a, a sort of a strident and big denial as I guess Shawn Michaels can offer in such a public place. He far better place. than Triple H, didn't he? Well, this is it. He has handled it better, I suppose. Um, you know, there was questions asked of Triple H and his no comment wasn't really a no comment, yes. if that makes sense. There were some of the things he said that were perhaps worse than saying nothing at all. And, you know, that's that's kind of been uh, discussed and debated and will continue to be so. And so will Shawn Michaels yeah. here. These are far from uh, clear and obvious terms with which WWE and NXT will act following the lawsuit and the details of it. But this is, you know, and a shout out to Nick Hausman, not just obviously for the reporting we've been able to aggregate here, but for asking the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other media that felt confident and prepared enough to ask those questions uh, in these settings, there are, there's such limited exposure to these figures yeah. and the worst that you can get from them is a no comment. Ultimately, the more they speak, the more we all can learn and everybody and everything, you know, once it's out in the brightest light, I think stands the best chance of finding the, the truth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you always hope these sorts of things are a catalyst for change. Yeah. And, you know, I remember speaking out and it, it felt like we didn't really completely achieve what we set out to when that began. No. It still feels like there are, there's a sort of dark underbelly to, to the business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people have to be held to account and, uh, and you know, these comments made by other wrestlers mm -hmm. have to be analysed at totally, face yeah. value and... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll bring you any developments as and when they come. The beefcake thing here, it's akin very much to how for so many years, um, the plane ride from hell was almost like viewed as almost like something from like a, a comedy or a film or something like that. A cartoon of it. Yeah. yeah, and then Dark Side of the Ring like laid bare the human cost of yes. all of that and then that kind of completely reframed everything that took place on that flight. Yeah, um, right. Moving on to another story now from uh, Tori Wilson. She sat, that, sat down with... Uh, Chris Van Vliet mm -hmm. um, to talk about well, what it was like being a diva back in the day in the WWE. Um, asking about her experiences following on from that, she said, I didn't watch wrestling. I didn't want to do anything with wrestling for many years after I left, mostly because I just had a certain amount of PTSD from being so vulnerable out there and feeling like I was kind of in this raunchy role that wasn't me. I felt judgment from people. I felt like people looked down on me for, you know, just the stuff that I did, the bra and panty matches and all that. I just wanted to shut that door. For many years, I didn't watch. It wasn't until they called me to do the Royal Rumble 2021 yeah. um, that I started to catch up and got really into it uh, even more than I ever was when I was in wrestling. Uh, speaking on the regular bikini contests and segments of the yeah. like, 
Uh, she said, they were all mortifying. People don't realize I went out in there and owned it the best I could and pushed through the fear, but it was mortifying. There were times when I remember specifically a house show that was in this bikini showdown with Dawn Marie and Sable and someone else. I was standing in the corner watching one of the girls dance in the middle and literally fighting back tears. I cannot believe I'm doing this right now. Uh, it got to a raunchy point and I'm like, I don't want to be a part of this, but that was also my job. When asked if she could say no to the roles, uh, Tori said, no, it was, <clears throat> it was like twice that I could remember that I said no. Uh, first of all, I'm a major people pleaser, so say, saying no to people is really hard, even if, it's, even if that's someone you know. I'm recovering from that. There was one time when I had a thing with Sable where Vince wanted if you come out with paint on my boobs like she did, and I was like, hard no, I can't do that. Another time was when I did Playboy. Vince wanted me to do a pay-per-view also, the video. Uh, that one was very hardcore press, and it was very, really hard for me to say no, but I absolutely didn't want that. Um, again, just another awful story, uh, Hamlet. Uh, but unfortunately, one of those things that I think many of us kind of assumed the you know, we, we remember the story coming out about the liter edge sex celebration stuff. It yeah. always feels like stuff that, you know, you cannot blame the performers for. No. Because for the most part, they appear to have been pressured into it. Um, and looking back now, you just feel awful that people have, that's the way that they perceived women's wrestling to be presented. Yeah, um, this is like, this, this is a familiar story, as yeah. you say, unfortunately. You know, there's a there's a story in here about power dynamics, isn't there? There's yeah. a story in here about people believing what they felt was within the remit of their job versus what there wasn't. There was cultural acceptance, uh, societal acceptance yeah. of certain like roles at the time, and indeed how, how badly a lot of that is aged doesn't forgive the fact that it happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, all of us as a fan base are sort of broadly complicit in that and how that was just normalized, I think, for decades. Yeah. Ultimately, like WWE's attempt kind of from 2015 onwards to whitewash all of that by saying, right, we're inventing women's wrestling now. We joke about that, but the reality was the period they were trying to like bury underground was their own. Mm. Was they were like, uh, well, actually, we think women's wrestling should be this. Yeah, well, who perpetrated the first version of it? Yeah. How was you guys again? Like, it's. I, I'm not going to sit here on, on a video and be a hypocrite and say that you know I wasn't just watching there and I, I probably wasn't delighting in it in the way that a lot of people in those buildings were, but I was just accepting it as a part yeah. of the show. You know, it was like an attitude era. This is a staple. Like, wasn't here's it? Here's a distraction, and then on to the wrestling or whatever. And it's you know it it does look and feel very shameful. And I applaud I guess Tori Wilson for yeah. speaking honestly about that and Lita previously and a lot of the other women that have spoke up about how difficult that balance was to strike at the time. Mm. Um, it's funny, it links of a fashion to our final story yeah. today. It's not, you know, it's, these are not nice stories to report, but feels relevant and yes, extremely exactly. topical and worthwhile discussing in a bit more detail. It's Becky Lynch um, doing some promotion for her autobiography. She was doing one of those live sign-ins mm -hmm. where the wrestlers will just speak. Seth Rollins was there with her, kind of acting as a sort of quasi-host and pitching some of the questions to her. And, you know, like, she would probably be um, positioned as, like, somebody that has been able to benefit from a different time. Yes. And, like, somebody that has been able to, like, pioneer women. One of the main events of change, yeah. This is it. And yet, she still speaks about her time during NXT. Um, regarding the training and the advice she was given when she was there between 2013 and 2015, she says, quote, even in my early stages in NXT, it was weird and it was confusing because you were told that women can't punch and we can't use things like steps and we can't use the posts and it was like, are we supposed to hair pull and slap each other? Mm -hmm. It was very confusing. I remember being told, and this is a quote, move like a girl. And I was like, what? I'm a girl, I'm moving. What do you mean move like a girl? It was so confusing. Uh, she follows on by saying, and also uh, where I wanted to get to, there had been no women that had gone there. So it's very male dominated, but I was trying to get into the space where the men were at the top of the card. So I had to rely on them for help and for guidance. I was lucky that I had people like you, she's referring to Seth, as well as John Cena, being able to ask him advice because it was all the live events. And so you very much had to go into the people who had been in the spots that you wanted to be. Luckily, everyone is so willing to help the younger, eager talent out in that regard. You know, of course, she's talking about pushing back on the limitations that mm -hmm. were placed on women for so long. Um, yeah, she was there between 2013 and 2015. There was the kind of infamous 2014 TV debut as the very reductive Irish dancer yeah. gimmick. She eventually shaped a persona that resembled the Irish last kicker that got the call in 2015. Then we had the man. Everything else that's come, um, her autobiography, I imagine, will be... Sounds like a fascinating read. A revealing read through a number of 
uh, transcending, transcendent years within wrestling. But yeah, it's this immediately reminded me of the Michelle McCool story. I was about to say that, yeah. Yeah, like get, going backstage after like trying to like make the women's division mean more in that Divas era and getting bollocked for yeah. fighting like the men, I think was the line, wasn't it? Don't fight like the men. Uh, just, just barrier upon barrier upon hurdle upon barrier. Rough. Yeah, it's mad to think that, yeah, a few years after that, Becky Lynch, quite rightly, main event in yeah. WrestleMania. Um, but it was, yeah, emblematic of the time, like you say. I mean, you think back when she was coming up through NXT, mm -hmm. as the likes of Bailey and Asuka and Sasha obviously were, mm -hmm. were making these changes that were obviously occurring in other uh, areas of the business, but it's WWE, it's the flagship. It was decades behind yeah. the rest of the world, isn't it? Like the... Whilst that's going on in, say, NXT, mm -hmm. On the main roster, they've been given four, they literally were the toilet break match. It was yep. like four minutes, mm -hmm. like you say, don't do anything flashy. We'll either have you fight over a title or a man, probably. Yep. And yeah, keep it simple, like you say. And then then suddenly 2015 rolls around and they're like, we've discovered women's wrestling. And yeah, I, I don't Come understand. Come on fans, give them a chance. We're, we're trying to do everything I we can. I don't understand what move like a woman means. I don't get that well, I think I, I depressingly think I do, but I, like you say, it, it's a bit like her being that Irish stereotype. Move like a girl implies, well, don't do anything, you know, too impressive because yeah. you're only a girl. It was, it was just a really awful time as well. If you tether it to the other advice, um, don't use the steps, don't use the post. There was obviously this idea of what was supposed supposed to happen in women's matches versus not. Do you remember CM Punk on the Art of Wrestling where he was talking about how, hey, like Vince, have you seen Ronda Rousey? Yeah. And Vince McMahon replied, yeah, isn't it barbaric? Isn't it awful? So there would have been this presumed, like I assume, yeah. like maybe like a top-down mindset about what women's wrestling should look like mm -hmm. versus the men's and we've had enough wrestlers come out and speak on that. So that would be my speculation of what yeah. that advice was supposed to mean even if it was delivered in a way that doesn't really mm. track or make sense. Um, but yeah, yeah. Very, very emblematic of how they were back then. Yeah, I, I think, I kind of think and hope more stories like this, more wrestlers will be able to speak uh, confidently or with more sort of agency than they've had previously to speak on matters like this in the future, in light of the lawsuit and everything, all the dominoes that are still to fall. Well, uh, we'll leave it there. Obviously, no Twitter questions today. Um, feel free to discuss what we've talked about in the comments section below. And uh, as Hamlet mentioned earlier, please do try and support all the charities that we've mentioned. We'll try and stick some in the comments uh, and in the description to support the, the charities that do some fantastic work uh, for some truly, truly amazing causes. But thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you soon.